Hello and welcome, welcome, welcome to another live on Marlene's Home and Garden. I'm so glad you could join me today. And, you know, I really appreciate you all so much. I already see a comment popping up. It's from Bruce Lee says, hi, Miss Marlene. Good evening, everyone. Let me know if you can hear me because we want to keep it moving and just want to make sure everything is nice and smooth. So just leave me a comment. Let me know. Uh, let me see. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, I got a notification. So let me take that off. Yeah, but let me know if you can hear me. I would certainly appreciate that. Okay. So today, as you, well, as you know, from my live videos, this is a gardening channel, but for my live videos, I feature either a fruit or vegetable or flower on that particular video and everything kind of like, you know, surrounds it, the topics that we discuss. So let me see here. So Andrea's Kitchen Time says, hi, we can hear you. Yay, that's awesome. So the star of the show today would be broccoli. Isn't that awesome? Most people like broccoli. I find that even kids actually like broccoli, which, you know, kids don't like vegetables a lot, but they do like broccoli. So that's good. And broccoli is really good for you. You know, they say it, it has a lot of fiber, as you can probably see right here, lots of fiber in there. Um, it also has a lot of antioxidants in there. And this is just by information that we get from time to time that's presented to us. And it has a lot of cancer fighting um, properties in it. You know, just good for overall cardiovascular health and things like that. So what's not to like, right? One thing some people complain about is that sometimes broccoli can make you a little bit gassy. So you kind of have to watch out for that part as well. So let's take a look and see what we're going on here. We have going on here now. So RCB Maverick Hunter says, evening all. Stream sounds nice. Thank you so much. Broccoli always tasted better than cabbage to me. Okay. And everybody has their thing. Some people like the one thing and not the other thing. So we just try to make it work. To Georgia Peaches says, hi, guys. Hello. And Bruce Lee says, good evening to everyone. Happy New Year. So, yes, happy New Year. It's still kind of new. And it just depends on when you might be watching this video. You know, if it is not, have a great day, wonderful day, whenever it is. So this is our broccoli right here. So we are going to be doing, um, it's a creamy broccoli chicken casserole. And it is cold where most of us are right now. I have a couple of people who come on from, you know, tropical areas like Jamaica and other islands like that. It's a little still kind of warm for you, cooler than normal, but not like cold winter weather. But, you know, comfort food is a very big thing in colder countries. We want something that's kind of like nice and creamy and rich and heavy to help our body to warm up and help us to fight the cold weather. You know, you have to go out in it and sometimes even inside the home, you'll find that even though you have the heat running, it still feels a little chillier even though the temperature may be what you would want. So the first thing I'm going to do is to put on some water in this pot right here. You can see it with a little salt in it. Let me go ahead and get it started. And we will need to blanch, not like boil it until it's too soft, blanch a little bit our broccoli to make it, you know, kind of soft to put it inside. Here. Let me make sure our oven is, been pre, pre, um, is being preheated. So that's going there as well. And let me just add a little bit of salt, not too much because some of these other things that go in there, they have um, just a little sprinkle of salt, not too, too much. So, you know, this is the start today. Broccoli, you'll see a couple other things being done for the broccoli as well. But an another good thing to have in your diet too is onions. You know, they're very, very good for you. Now, some people that watch my channel and other, you know, gardener channels, they grow their own broccoli sometimes. Um, I'm not at that point yet. I'm doing other things. But if you can grow your own, wonderful. If not, get some from the market, right? And some people also have the frozen broccoli as well, too, which is perfectly fine. So you can use a fresh one or you can use a one that is frozen. Either way, it's good. And people sometimes, you know, like frozen vegetables, they get a bad rap because people are like, oh, it's frozen, so it's not good. But sometimes it's even better than the one sitting in the store because when they harvest them, they quick freeze them right away so all the nutrients are locked in. So you get more than if it's sitting in the grocery store, like, you know, for a couple of days, weeks and so on before you actually take it home and, you know, cook it or whatever. So there's an upside to each of them. But yeah, if you can grow your own. You know, that's really, really awesome. So our water is right there. Now it's going to be coming to a boil. And then the next thing in the main dish today would be our chicken. So that's our chicken right here that I'm using. And I would say maybe use about... We're going to be, actually, let me show you the size dish that we're going to be um, filling today over here. This is actually, um, you can see relative to me, the size. This is actually um, 
nine by 13 inches. So it's a pretty good size. So this is going to be serving for a large family or if you wanted to, you know, maybe use it for two days, depending on how many people are in your family. So that's the size we're going to be filling today. And this is the chicken right here. Andrea says, this is, um, oh, she says, I love broccoli. I, I tend to use it in my broth soup. Yeah, well, that sounds really good um, to Georgia peaches. And Andrea says, that is so true. Just made a large batch of red pea soup. Oh, that sounds so yummy. I want to give you a heart. <laughs> so this is our chicken right here. This chicken has been, um, I basically just, you know, put it to sear a little bit in the frying pan and then flipped it over on the other side, put a little bit of water on there so that we can kind of like, you know, simmer down, you know, it's properly cooked. So this is a chicken that we're going to be using. So that's how I did mine on the stove top. But of course, you do have the option if you would like to, to buy a rotisserie chicken. If you don't have time to like, say, cook your own chicken. Another option is to have it baked. You can do baked chicken as well. So that's another option for you right there. I've even heard of some cases where people are doing the casseroles and they actually boil the chicken, which is a little bit of a stretch for me personally. But it just depends on what your preference is. Because it seems like it, I mean, you can put things in there because this is what I used to flavor it when I was doing it. So it's not even a whole lot because, you know, you have a lot of stuff going on with it. But um, I used salt, of course, and I like to use sea salt. Of course, everybody has their own thing that they prefer, but I like to use sea salt. Of course, you have different types of brands that you can use because it's supposed to be healthier for you. And I put a little bit of black pepper inside there. And I also put some garlic powder in there as well. Of course, you can also put the natural garlic if you like it you with know, a fresh one. That's another option as well. So that gives you some more flavor in the chicken before you start. And hopefully you like garlic. And I, some people, they just prefer to add like, um, you know, salt and pepper and that's it for them. But, you know, this kind of helps to enhance the flavor a little bit. So we're waiting for our water to boil right there. So we're going to go ahead and um, put these in there once it is ready. So I'm going to go ahead and get that cut up for you because... Uh, we don't want the pieces to be too, too big. We're going to cut it off like to about here for each of those. And my husband is going to be joining us shortly. He's also going to be doing like a stir fry with the broccoli. And I think we may also do, I think they call them like crude eyes when you have like, you know, the vegetables in, you know, small bite, almost bite-sized pieces and you dip those in and you can have it that way. So let me go ahead and get my board and get started. Oh, that's the sound of my oven right there. It's been pre-lit or preheated, I should say. Yeah. So this is our broccoli right here. Let me make sure you can see what I'm doing. We'll put the chicken back over a little bit over there. It's going to stop after a while. It's just letting you know that it's warm and ready. So this is our broccoli right here. And I'm going to go ahead and cut them off. And I know um, I saw somebody do a really nice broccoli soup recently on their channel. It was really, really good. You want to say hello to everybody? <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> yeah, uh, so he's going to be, we're teaming up again today to, to get things going for you. And again, if you're just joining me, because I see a couple more people coming on, that the star of the show today is broccoli. Because, you know, on these lives, you know, we try to use either a fruit or vegetable or an occasion of flower, depending, you know, like special occasion, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, or something like that will feature a flower. But for the most part, it is going to be a fruit or vegetable. And broccoli is the one that we're doing today. And the recipe is creamy chicken casserole, creamy broccoli chicken casserole. And our chicken has already been cooked over here. And like I was saying before, you can have your chicken baked. Some people boil it, which is a little bit of a stretch for me. You can have it seared in your frying pan like I did earlier. No, they can see it. You can leave it right there. That's fine. They can see it. Um, but you can have it done in the, um, just sear it, have it steam with a little bit of water first, and then you can go ahead and do it that way. Let me turn this back this way so you can see what I'm doing over here. So the water is boiling right now. So I'm going to go ahead and start cutting these into, you know, fairly bite-sized pieces. It's still a little bit too big for me. So I'm going to cut it like right here. So I think like this would be a reasonable size. But you don't want them to be too big inside there. Let me take a look at the chat. So Andrea says, rotisserie is a great and easy start to deal with the chicken. Absolutely. So like, say you don't have enough time, you can always go in and do it that way. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and cut them. If they're a little bit big, I'm going to cut it maybe like in three parts because we want them to be, you know, reasonably bite-sized. And I'd love to know how you guys are doing, how you're handling the new year so far. 
If you made any resolutions, are you keeping them? Usually I don't like to make resolutions, but I do have like goals in that that I'm trying to go for. Just general things, you know, um, a few little specific things sometimes, but I don't put too much pressure on myself. I say, you know, I'd like to make it, but if I don't, you know, there's a reason why. That does everything for a reason. So, so far you can see how they're looking right here. That's the kind of size that we're looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it, you know, cut these off into smaller pieces. And of course, you know, they tell you sometimes like if you're making soups and stuff like that, not to throw this part away, mm -hmm. you know, it is, it's still good. It has like good nutrients in there, lots of fiber. Like I was saying, you know, broccoli has, they say it has cancer fighting properties. It has um, a lot of fiber, you know, like I was saying, and other, you know, antioxidants in there that really help your body, cardiovascular health, you know, different types of things like that. So don't throw these away unless mm -hmm. you really want to. He says he's going to use it because he's doing a stir fry afterwards. So I guess we'll see that part there. We're going to go ahead and get this cut up. I mean, I guess I could probably put it in what I'm doing too, but I just want to have the little floret tops that you're seeing here. And once again, like if you really don't have a lot of time, all of these things, you can get them, you know, like ahead of time, like your rotisserie chicken, like we were saying, or you can also get your um, frozen Broccoli, broccoli floret so they'll already be cut in florets for you so it makes it quite easy so is anybody going to the gym as a new thing for the year or just going like for walks you know more walks or doing things like that i know when the weather is cold it's kind of stormy in lots of places it's you know a little more challenging for us to try to get out you know but so it is you just do what we can. Sometimes you can't be too hard on yourself. Give yourself a little bit of a break, and then you pick up from where you can after that. Okay. It's going to get cool where you guys are. You know, please, you know, take the time to you know, make sure your pipes are dripping and little things like that to help keep your house safe. Yeah, that's my husband giving some advice. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's an excellent word of advice right there. I absolutely agree. If you're in a house... You know, it's, let me turn down this flame a little bit here. I can hear it kicking up around there. Yes, but if you're in a house, you know, especially you, and you have, you know, like a hard freeze coming in, I'd say anything that's below, like 32 degrees or below Fahrenheit, you want to go in and make sure that you leave your pipe. And do they leave it dripping on the cold side? Cold side. On the cold side, right. Because, you know, you have your hot water and your cold water. So if it's going to go below freezing, you want to make sure that you go in and leave the cold side dripping. Just a drip is all you really need need to have going. Yeah. So that way the water keeps flowing overnight. And it's especially important overnight. Because you're not using the water. You're not flushing your toilets. You're not doing anything. So the water is basically stagnant. It's not moving. Right, so keep it dripping so the water is flowing so that way your pipes don't freeze. So, you know, when water freezes, it expands, and if your pipes expand, then they're gonna burst, and that's a problem you do not want to have in the winter or any time. But the winter is really, 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 really bad. So, I'd say definitely leave your, leave your pipes dripping on the um on the cold side if you're having a hard freeze coming your way. So, that's a definite, definite good reminder there. I appreciate you bringing that up. It's and also, if you're going to be traveling, because people travel at different times, and this isn't necessarily for this week. It can be any time of the year. Let's say you're going to be away from your home for a while, and the weather is cold. You'd want to go and leave the pipe dripping. And I know, yes, you want to say the water bill might be high. But if you suspect you could have like a hard freeze when you're away, just leave it dripping, you know, leave it dripping. And that way, you know, you won't have that happen. Because I did have a co-worker one time. She went on vacation. She had so much fun. And then when she came back, Oh, her whole apartment was messed up. And it was an apartment too. The whole apartment was messed up. The pipes were busted and everything. So they had to get, actually, my bad, it was a townhouse. So everything was um, a complete mess. So you can imagine you come back from your vacation and that's what you're dealing with. That is no fun at all. So we're getting a couple more pieces in here. I did see something coming on the chat. Let me see what we're seeing here. So... Andrea says, I have a few stocks in my fridge. I'll try to use them. Oh, is are you talking about the um the broccoli or broccoli. I'm guessing you're talking about the broccoli, yes. And then she says, I have been using a one mile intensive walker video with my three KB weights. 
Whoa. Or is that? I guess you mean three three pound weights, right? That must be three LB. I'm guessing. Yeah, with your three pound weights, it's too cold to be out. I completely on. Oh, see, she corrected herself. She said three pounds. Yes, I completely understand it. Like I said, when the weather is that cold outside, you're. I mean, unless you're a real fitness buff and everything, you really are not trying to be outside. You know what I mean? You just you just want to be nice and warm, and that's why this dish is perfect for that time for this time of year. But it's good for any time of year. It doesn't really matter, but you know, it comes in extra handy at this time. All right, so we're cutting them up here. And I so appreciate you guys that are watching me live right now. Absolutely appreciate it. But also my replay people, when you come in at a later time, I also appreciate you for coming on there as well. So we have, I think we have enough right here right now. So this I'd say is probably about two cups of the broccoli and this is not like a hard and fast recipe you know it's kind of like you know do what works for you basically is what i would say so if you like to have a lot of broccoli you could put even more than i have if you don't like to have a lot of broccoli you could put less than i have it just depends on what you prefer so our water is fully boiled so we're just going to go ahead and drop our broccoli in there and again it has a little bit of salt in it for if you're just joining Yeah, so now with blanching, you basically don't want it to be cooked too long because <clears throat> one thing I will say about broccoli is that it tends to it tends to um get kind of mushy very quickly. So when you're cooking it, you have to, you know, keep an eye on it. Especially the top, that's you know, the softer part right here, where the little flower the florets are, it tends to get cold very quickly. Not cold, sorry. It uh, tends to get soft uh, very quickly. So you have to kind of keep an eye on it. Not to get it to boil quicker. Typically I like to cover my pot so that way you know the air isn't escaping so much, so it tends to boil a lot faster. But keep an eye on it, you know, whichever way you go. Let's take a look at the chat. Oh, we have Pastor Juanita. Welcome, welcome. She says, yay, I'm so excited. Have been, not been for a while. A blessed 2024 to everyone. Marlene, you look fantastic. Well, God is good. Thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate that. Couldn't do it without him, you know. But keep me in your prayers, guys. I have some tests coming up in a couple of days. So keep me in your prayers, you know, that they'll be okay. <clears throat> So I hope you're all having a great new year. So we were talking about just people setting different, you know, goals for themselves. Some people say resolutions, saying hello, people, you know, like resolutions or whatever, but just things that you, I call them aspirations, you know, because if you know that things are happening in your life, you may want to make changes, you know, do things a little bit differently to improve on yourself. It could be anything, you know, it could be health wise. It could be, you know, faith, faith wise. You know, reading your Bible through for the year, just different things that you can do. You know, um, go to the gym. That's not one for me. <laughs> but like we're saying, you can, you know, work out at your, you know, in your house, you know, walk around, just do something. Even dancing, you know, people sometimes dancing, even just moving, you know, when your body's moving, I'm it's telling it's you, important. it Especially. makes a very big difference. Mm -hmm. Especially during during the winter time, you know, you, you know, yes, you can just slow down. But one of the key things that, um, we don't like to do during the winter time, which is important to have like fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. is make sure you stay hydrated. We don't think about that. Right? Because when when it's winter time, it's cold, you drink a lot of water and stuff like that. You want to go to the bathroom, but you we get dehydrated, right? Because of because of everything that's and we're not because we're not moving and stuff like that, it can be a problem. But you know, stay hydrated, that's important. Yes. You lose water through your skin, uh -huh. you know, different things like that. You know, I mean, as as I say, you get ashy, right? So <laughs> some people don't know what that means, so, but yes, so, that so, can happen too. You get kind, you know, your skin gets kind of like you know dry and looking kind of you know so funny looking and everything. Protect your skin. Mm -hmm. Drink so, a me, lot of water. Plus, you excuse me, your organs. Yes. Very important. Very important. Yeah. All all year, but you know. Yeah. Just the same in the winter time as well, too. Yeah. 
All right. So our and broccoli this. is coming along. Let me just check it one more time. You can go ahead and do the onions. Did you need a bag to put that in? Yeah, I'll do it. How much onion do you want? About half of that, um, like chopped. Okay. So again, you want our broccoli. You know what I like about broccoli, guys? Whenever you're cooking it, you notice that whenever it's, it steams a little bit, you see that it tends to look a lot greener than it did before. It is just so beautiful. Look at the color. You can see it from there. Let me bring it over. It looks so green and so pretty. And all of those are things that's going to help your body to stay healthier. It's a little bit firm, so I'll give it a little bit more time so it can come on up. All right. Danielle. I see. Oh, Daniela. Welcome, welcome, Daniela. She says, God bless you. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate you. This is our first time. I need to get some of my first time people when they come on. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> when they come on for the very first time, one of my lads. I hope you're having a fantastic new year so far. I really, really do. You know, we just keep trusting and believing and just put one foot before the other and just try to make the best of what we have. But sometimes, you know, we need to find the bumps in the road and we want to, you know, complain and feel that, you know, we're the, you know, we're going through such a terrible time. But sometimes if you look around you, you see that some people are going through so much worse than you. So things will always be a lot worse than they are. And that's why I never ever say it couldn't be any worse because it always can be don't any worse. And Maybe. I don't even say it because it's kind of yeah. like you're tempting fate by saying that. You can't, it always could be worse. Always. Yeah. The thing is, well, you all hear the same, you know. Can you do it over here so they can see you? They always tell you, you know, take your lemons and make them into lemonades. But one thing I, I really tell people, I said, you know what, everything you go through in life, there's a lesson to learn. So it's, it's not about, you know, hey, you know, it's not going good and all that. But just pay attention because everything that you go through in life, there's something to learn from it. And sometimes failure, even though it's hard, it's a good teacher. Because when you, when you mess up on something and you pay attention and you learn, then you tend to not make that mistake again if you're paying attention. Because you don't want to go through that same mistake again. You don't want to, you know, feel that sense of, you know, failing or anything like that or hurt. So it's it's a good thing. And you can also use that to help somebody else who might be going through, you know, something similar. So, you know, make the best of it. Enjoy the journey, as you know, Marlene always say. Yes, you have to try. All right, do you want these chops? How small do you want yes, them? No, you have to be more specific. I, I, will cut them, I will cut them. Let them see what like, you're doing. You've got to go over a little I'll bit more them, all like, the way so they can see. Like, what just you're bend doing. it over. Let's bend it over. Let's all the way over. so they can see us so they can see what okay. you're doing. There you go. So they can see you chopping it up. Let me take a look at the comments here. So, yeah. So Andrew says she meant broccoli stalks. I figured that's what you meant. That you said you had some in your fridge. And we're saying don't throw them away because, you know, there are a lot coming down here. Like if you have soups and different things, stir fries, don't throw this part away. Use this part right here as well, too, in different ways. So you may even, you know, like batter them and fry them in, um, you know, oil or something. There are different things you can do with them. So just okay. season them up really good. Salt, pepper, some garlic powder, or fry your garlic out yeah. in the oil. Boom, you're good to go. Cheese. I mean, <laughs> different things you can do. With it. I mean, right. Just, just, one thing I learned growing up is that, you know, you don't throw any. I mean, most of the things you don't throw away, you find a creative way to make it. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. This day in Jamaica, turn your hand and make fashion. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what we do. And it's a necessity of the modern invention. So, that too. So, you know, be creative. Because cooking, cooking is about, it's just like painting, it's just like anything. It's like art. You just make it happen, you know. I don't want to give, bring the heat too near to you, but I just wanted to show you guys. So I've strained them off right here from the hot water, and they're still fairly. They're soft, but just barely because we don't want them to be kind of like mushy, like I was saying before. And they're such a nice, pretty green color right now. I just love how it looks. It's just going to cool down just a little bit, but of course, we're going to bake everything. So we'll just rest it right here to cool down just a little bit. And he's chopping up at the onions. Let me take a look at some more of the comments here. So 
Andrea says, yes, guys, I find that I get thirsty very easily these days. Three bottles on average per day. Yeah. yeah. Well, it depends on what size the bottles are, right? But they say, like, what is it? Like, um, is it eight, eight ounce glasses for the day? And it depends. Like, if depends you're somebody who works out a lot or anything, of course, you may need more than that. But you can over drink, too, though. You can have water toxicity. So you still have to, yeah. you know, be reasonable with it. The thing is not to have all of it at the same time. Right. Pace, pace, pace yourself. I'm not one who can just chug water down like that. I have to kind of, like, sip it a little bit as I go and then, you know. So RCB Maverick Hunter says, I guess the broccoli is always greener on the other side of the pot. <laughs> Yes. All right. I need a bell to ring. Ting a ling a ling. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, I'll get a call yeah. Good one. The RB, RCB. Oh, oh, Andre is saying, um, she's saying LOL. Do you think, yes, I absolutely agree. So Andre says, yes, welcome to Daniela. Absolutely. We are so glad that you're here. Yeah. Right. All right. So um, how much more are you going to cut up? Maybe like... Just a well, few more tell, pieces. Tell me, yes, it's got two more pieces on one, but... Yeah, once you're finished with that one, I think we're, you can stop right there. That should be you enough. Should? Yeah, that, that should be good, good enough. It's, it's, it's good. All right, he's going in. You know, you can't have too much onions, right? It always gives it that extra kick. So let me show you some of the things that we were using here. In the meantime, we have the star of the show today, which is our broccoli right here. We have our chicken over there. And I just seasoned it with some salt, some garlic powder and some black pepper right here. And like I say, you can use a big chicken if you want. You can, they say boiled chicken. Mm, I don't know about that. But you can if you're, you know, kind of rushing. But I just kind of like, you know, seared mine on either side. Had it cooked on a little bit with a little bit of water, you know, after seasoning it, of course. And then they're there. They're a little bit cooler because we're going to have to shred them to put in it. So that's what I use there. The other things we're going to be using is um, cream of chicken. I always turn this wrong because the camera is reversed. You, you can see the right without it being reversed. Okay. So it's cream of chicken right here. That's what we're going to be putting in it, as well as some, um, what do you call it now? Some sour cream. And of course, the other things are going to go in there. Okay. All yeah. right. So, so that's right. So now I have to shred my chicken. And I'm going to put them in my metal bowl that I use from time to time so we can have it saved in there. And of course, you know, there are different ways you can shred your chicken. You chop it up. Sometimes I chop it up, but this you can use a fork. So I'm going to try that a little bit first to see how it's looking. If I don't like how it's going, I'll just switch over and use my um, knife. So for the chicken now, you can basically use, like I said, a whole chicken, whether you bake it or it's a rotisserie chicken or whatever, or if you wanted to get like the breast, because I know like my sister, she is more of a, She's not like a dark meat person, even if it's a casserole, she still wants to have all white meat. So in that case, you can just get some chicken breast, but I would say get anywhere from about two to three pounds, depending on how big you're making it, if you're doing it in one in a dish like this. This is a nine by 13 um, baking dish that I'm using here. Right, I'm gonna go ahead and see the onion off the word. Or to put it up on. All right, so we're gonna go ahead now and start to shred shred the chicken so we could do it that way and just shred it on out or you can have it chopped on the board i think it has a little bit more texture when you shred it with a fork but of course you know it just depends on what your preference is how do you small how smaller how large you shred it um, so it can be, you know, like bite-sized pieces. Okay. Let me show you guys what it looks like. Kind of like, so if you can see it. But, you know, sometimes, you you know, you'll get like, um, I guess like if you get like tacos sometimes, or even like with beef, you could, you know, shred beef like that too, in different ways. I'm trying to think what other way you could get it shredded, but I think that might if be it. Use a, like a full process, right? Mm. But then, then it would have to be really. Yeah, I wonder uh, how it would come out. Though, yeah, you know? I have to put it on low speed. Let me take some off and put it here. Okay. Yeah, that's good. 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 Yeah, that's good.
you know, shred it or cut it up. Yeah. And, um, you know, you may or may not have noticed that my channel name has changed. It's not a major change, but I did a couple of short videos explaining that. I also put it on Instagram as well, that my channel name has changed. It's not a major change. I've been toying with the idea for some time now. So it, it's no longer Marlene's how-tos. Bye-bye, Marlene's how-tos. <laughs> it's Marlene's home and garden. So some of you probably didn't even realize that I changed it, but I did. And it's just because, you know, I want to zero in on the fact that it's I'm dealing with plants that are both inside the house and outside the house. Of course, there'll always be more plants outside in my garden because when the weather is suitable, that is my most favorite place. And even in the winter too, as I showed you a video recently, my winter winter um, winter um blooming flowers, the ones that bloom in the winter are their prettiest in the winter, like the kale and so on, pansies and all of that. Um, even though, you know, you can go out and look at those, it's not perfect garden weather, you know, and they're beautiful. Um, winter birds that come like cardinals and blue jays and so on. So you get to see some of those. But um, it's about plants indoors and outdoors. And I did my, the hydroponics garden recently, the Letpa company had sent me um, sent me one and they asked me to do a product review. So I did it on a previous video, like two videos ago, I did it. And guys, I'm telling you, I planted some herbs in there and they are coming up so good. So God's willing, Thursday coming, I am going to be doing my first harvest of those herbs. And I wish I had a video, um, you know, to show you me cooking with them because I'm going to use them before the next live. <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, you'll see how they did, you know, in that time frame. It's a short window of time, you know, to, to get your first harvest. So it works out really, really well. You could do like this, you could do like salads or, you know. Oh, there's so many things because I, I planted, you, if you watch a video, you remember I planted cilantro mm -hmm. and I planted basil and I, what was the other one? Cilantro, basil and oregano. oregano. So basically you can have a nice, like some Italian recipes. You could put those in there like, um, you know, like um lasagna. It can be um like meat, you know, spaghetti and meat sauce. All of those things, you know, they're perfect for them. So I think what I want to do, even though it's typically not suitable, you know, in colder weather, and that would be to do like a um, like a ceviche. No, not, not ceviche. What do you call it again? Pico. Pico de gallo. My, one of my sons is very good at making that. So I'm probably going to use some of the cilantro for that or some other kind of um, Mexican type um, food. If I got it wrong, please let me know. Yeah, I think you got it right, yeah. Mm. It goes in salsa as well, too. I mix them up sometimes. I call one the other. You know, we have a lot of tomatoes, and I'll put corn in mine, and, you know, garlic and onions, some lemon juice. We'll do one of those, too. Like, you know, when the weather has changed, like more towards the springtime or early mm. summer, I'll probably do maybe the start of the show that they might be tomatoes or something. Oh, my, my, my. One of my sons hates you know, tomatoes. You know, like but anyway, for that one to start the show for that one might be um might be tomatoes and we'll just do like um some pico and some salsa and all of that. But our cilantro will be right there in it because you know you kind of want to have your cilantro in there. All right, so we are shredding up our chicken here. And sometimes you need to put a little piece. I don't want people to like bite into them, so I'll pull them out. You know, like a little bit of the gristle might be in yeah, there. Or tendon, the tendon. Yeah, the little, so yeah, yeah there's attachments on there. So we're just going to keep shredding. And that's why I prefer when you, you do it by hand that way because you get to take off those pieces. Mm -hmm, you can see them. You can see it. So, you know, it makes a big difference. Yes. So. And like I said, I mean, you can chop this up. Chopping it, of course, would be a lot faster. But I think when you do it this way, it adds a little bit more texture to it. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking. And before, you know, we put the chicken, we wash it with vinegar and all that. So I'll do the same thing yeah, when I'm going to cook the stir fry. Yeah, just a little vinegar, vinegar solution, a little vinegar and water. Yeah. You know, we do that from time to time to help to cut the rawness. Right. Because, you know, sometimes it can be a little raw, some of these chickens. And for me personally, I like to get like um the farm, farm raised, farm raised, no, not farm raised, free range is what free we range. call it, free yeah. range chicken, if we can. It costs more, but, you know. I prefer those, but if you can, do you, you need to oil the um the dish over here, or you just put it in there? As yeah, no, I'll grease it. I'll okay. grease the dish. So we only have two more pieces left, guys. This is such a delicious recipe. Well, 
Are there any other spices that you add in there apart from what you have here? I mean, I'll just put a little bit of garlic powder in it. You know, even though I did put it in the chicken, but just to have it dispersed in everything so we can do it that way. So we are moving along. And I want to thank you all again so much um, because one of my um, goals or aspirations for last year was to reach to 3,000 subscribers. And gardening channels, well, mine, I know for sure, you know, the views tend to slow down when it comes on to the, you know, like um, the end of the year because people are not thinking so much of their garden or whatever. So things tend to slow down a little bit or sometimes a lot, just depending. But um, but you guys, you know, you gave me my views and, you know, I got new subscribers. So I was able to get to 3,000 actually two days before the year ended. Isn't that something? <laughs> And I said to myself, well, I guess I'm probably not going to meet that goal that I had in mind, but I'm pretty close. They say, reach for the stars and you'll catch the moon. You'll get something. So that's kind of the goal I had in mind. And two days before the year ended, voila, it happened. Because they send me notifications, you know, like major changes. Because I'm now at 250 videos. I've uploaded 250 videos. So they sent that information to me. As well as the day, as soon as I got to 3,000, they told me. They got to... Um, 3,000 subscribers. So I do thank you all so much for that. And be sure to share out, you know, like the videos that I have out right now, the um the winter ones, because again, you know, sometimes in the um in the winter season, you know, the views kind of go down because people are not thinking so much of the garden at that point. And I do put them out every Thursday. So if you don't see, if you didn't get a notification of it, you can go looking to my channel. Marlene's Home and Garden, and you will see it there. So we're almost finished. I'm just trying to make some of these bigger ones into smaller pieces. So there you have it, guys. And that's the texture right there. All right, so we have the chicken in the pot here. I just wanted to see what it looks like. And I have my um, I need to get this opened right now. Let me see if my can opener is can opener is nearby. I do have some I should just pull them back so if I can find it. Sometimes these are things I get. Oh, here it is. Sometimes you're looking for your things and it's like, where did I put it last? Especially if you have more than one person in the kitchen. So this one here for this size, this is um a 26 ounce can right there you, you have smaller ones too you can get maybe like three of these and it just depends on how thick you want it to be i think i probably need to get a new can opener this year this one has served me faithfully but i think it's coming close to the end of its days okay So I'm not sure what else you could use in terms of making it creamy, but this is what we use right here. You can see, you can see how it looks, the texture right there. It's called, and this is this is the Walmart brand, not promoting them, but whatever brand you prefer, you can use it. So it says ideal for cooking. I'm not sure if you could maybe try cream of mushroom, but typically we just use a cream of chicken in here. So that's the amount that we have. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add in our cream of chicken soup. ahead and stir it around. I know it looks kind of funny right now, but trust me, when it's done, it's going to be good. So along with this, for a little bit more creaminess and so on, we're going to be adding in some um, some sour cream. So I'm going to get that from the fridge. Because we always want to make sure that our food is kept at a safe temperature. So this one here, this one is a one pound one, so that's 16 ounces. I'm gonna start off with about half of it first and see how it looks. Then we'll take it from there. And this is not like a hard and fast recipe. You're basically eyeballing what you're doing, so. And we're just mixing it around in here with my fork. 
it looks so nice and pretty already. And this is our broccoli right here. It's cooled down enough, I think. You know what? It doesn't matter because it's going right inside the oven. And you can add some cheese to this if you like. You don't have to. I'm just going to add a little bit of cheese, not too, too much. And this is why when you see me like mixing it a lot like this, because you kind of have to mix it around to get everything incorporated together, which is again why I say not to make the broccoli um, hard or put it in like, you know, the one that's uncooked like this. You know, you want to blanch it a little bit until it's a little bit tender to the touch, but not mushy, because you don't, you don't want it to hold up the texture. So we have the sour cream, we have that, and I'm gonna go ahead and add in our onions. He did a lot, so I'm probably gonna leave that some, leave some behind. Oh my goodness, I lost my track of the chat. I apologize, guys. Let me take a look here. Blessings from the garden. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Happy New Year to you. I just love to see her. Um, guys, check her out. Blessings from the Garden Channel. She does wonderful container gardens. And hers, I do lots of flowers and less fruits and vegetables. She's a flip side. She does mostly fruits and vegetables that she reaps in her own backyard with her twin sister and her daughter. So, and I did link her in my last video so you can check her out if you have the chance to do so. So this is a lot of onions, like I was saying. Oh, pretty, Um, let me see. Pretty Things Home Decor, Cooking and Lifestyle. Hello, Renee. Nice to see you. Welcome, welcome, and Happy New Year to you. It's been a little while since I've seen you, so I'm very excited that you decided to join me today. I appreciate it. And we have the Decor and More with Anita. Hi, friend. Hi, how are you? Welcome, welcome. Glad to have you join me. So I'm just going to be putting a little bit of the um, this in here. Because we want onions, but not too much. So that's, I'd say maybe it's about, about three tablespoons. We like our food kind of, you know, like very flavorful, very spicy and all of that. So you'll see a lot of that going on around here. So right now, if you just join in, we have our chicken that was, um, you can bake it, like I said, or if you want, you can go in and just, you know, like sear it, have it steamed on a little bit and then shred it. So we have the chicken in here. We have our cream of, um, cream of chicken, condensed cream of chicken soup. We have our, um. Sour cream. Sour cream right here, whichever brand you prefer. And of course, our broccoli is in there that's been blanched already. And it's, um, if everything has enough salt, we don't need to add any more salt. I just add a little bit more garlic powder to it. Let that flavor kick in. And of course, a little bit of black pepper. That's a must. Spice it on up. I'm not a red pepper flakes kind of person. I'm not sure if that would work in here. I know my sister, she yeah, loves those, red pepper nice. flakes. Yeah. yeah. So possibly to give it that kind of kick, but that might be better served for your, um, what you might call it that you're doing shortly, your uh, your stir fry. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in our nine by 13 dish right here, which would be this. Grease it. Yeah, I'm gonna just use some oil. Sometimes I'll use butter, sometimes I'll use oil. And again, guys, you know, whenever I do my live videos, it's always featuring some fruit or vegetable or an occasion, like special occasions would feature like a flower, you know, like milestones or, you know, like things like that. But and my mom always says that your hands are the best greaser. And you're, you, know, you can use a brush if you want, but, you know, as long as your hands are clean, just go on and it gets all the carnage. You don't have to worry about any of that. It's fully covered. So we'll be hitting this at 375. Yes, 375. Right. Um, I put I put um hour uh, about fifteen minutes, so I'll give you a little extra time. Yeah. You might be like, you know, like this. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and get this over in here now. So that's the texture right there. And like I said, if you want, you can put like some cheese in it. You know, that's entirely up to you. So this right here is basically your, I'd say this is like the meat portion of your dish. So, you know, we're, we made some rice earlier because, of course, I don't want to keep you guys for too, too long. So we made some rice earlier. We're going to be having this on a dead of rice. So I'm going to serve it up. Let me get this spoon here. 
So I'd say if you wanted proportions for the, you know, the proportion of the cream of um, chicken soup, I'd say like three parts of this to one part of the sour cream is what you would use. But again, personal preference, you know, it's not a hard and fast rule, whatever works best for you is what you would do. Okay. And the chicken, I say like about three pounds of chicken. So you're using a rotisserie, that's baked already, rotisserie chicken. Or not. So this is looking so good already. And the good thing is because everything is already cooked, it's not going to be needing a lot of time inside the oven, you know. And people who like to bake their things and freeze them, you also have the option to where you can make this and you can freeze it. And you can just warm it up when you're ready for these cold winter days that we have here. I'll try to eat it out as much as I can. That's how it's looking so far. And the next thing that's going to add some crunch. Because, you know, whenever you have, you know, something. Because this is what it's looking like so far, as you can see. It looks really nice and creamy. But we also want to add a little bit of crunch on the top. So that's where our rich crackers come in. Let me wash my hands a second. Add some things on there. Excuse me, guys. Put my sour cream away. Back in the fridge. And again, guys, remember that your broccoli, you know, has a lot of fiber in it, which is really good for you. You also have a lot of antioxidants in there that are just really good for your body. So that's perfect. So here we have our crackers. This may or may not be enough, but you can just kind of like crunch it in here. It's lightly salted. Um Yes, that let me mention that too. Me, I don't like too much salt in my stuff. You know, yeah. if you're getting younger, as they would say, <laughs> as you're getting younger, you don't want to have too much um too much salt in your food. So I usually go for the one that says hint of salt. So there is some salt in there, but just not too much. So we kind of mash it. I think I'm probably gonna need a little bit more than that. So let me get a bowl. Yeah. I'm going to put my mashed out so far in here. And as your hands are clean, you can always yes, play around with it a little bit. So this is what we have so far. I think we're probably going to need a little bit more. And of course, you can put this in your food processor if you want. But I prefer to kind of crush it that way a little bit because give me some texture yes you don't want everything to be perfectly even so you're gonna crush some more here again so you could even use like a mortar we have a mortar and testing that we could use i'm sorry i cannot see it right now i'm just trying to get it out of the bag let me just mash it a little bit Okay. Runaway, runaway cracker. <laughs> runaway Ritz cracker. Smash that out as well. And then I'm not sure how I guess you could use butter if you're not someone who you know is not into too much, like you're lactose intolerant, you don't like to have cheese at all. You know, then you could use. We could use some butter instead, but we're gonna mix it in with some cheese. And then pass with the shredded cheese, we'll just go ahead and add it onto it. Just toss it around in there. We're using sharp cheese, but you can use, you can use whatever other um, type of cheese that you want. Yeah, whenever I'm cooking, I, um, I like to cook with extra sharp cheese. When I'm eating cheese, I prefer to have medium cheese, so it just depends. So put it in liberally, as they would say, and then just mix it around. So right now you added about probably four ounces. Mm. Yeah. Kind of like that. 
And again, this is just to put on top of it, so if you need to add a little more, you can always add it. Then we're just going to go ahead and sprinkle it over on the top. Give it that nice crunch. Like I said, because some people they just use a melted butter, you can do that if you want. But I feel like if you have enough cheese in there, when the cheese melts, it should be enough to kind of like, you know, hold everything together. All right, guys, so we have all the surfaces covered now, so I think we are good to go. And in the uneven part, you can just tap it down just a little bit. You know, guys, you know, if you have kids or grandkids, I always say, um, and blessings from the garden, I know you do this all the time, that you basically, um, you have your daughter helping you in the garden, and it's really good to get your kids started off, especially if you grow something and they see you bring it and then cooking it, yep. you know, that sticks in their mind and they will not forget it. They may drift away, but eventually they will come back to it. So this is how it's looking right here, right? Let me just show you the price to get inside there. I have a lot of light going through, but... Right. Yeah, the lighting is usually an issue. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So you can see the cheese and the crackers that are on top, and you can see the pre minutes that's under there. And um, if you missed the first part I'm leading up to this, I went over it a couple of times. You're more than welcome to go back and watch the replay afterwards to see exactly how that was. All right, so we're going to leave it to cook, and it's not going to take too, too long like your typical things because. Uh, what happens is because it's done that way, yeah. you know, well, everything is pretty much cooked already just for everything to come by nicely, get melted out and, you know, just really come together. So I think that that is just great. Very, very easy to make. If you can prepare it ahead of time, you know, you can do all of that. So that's part A. My husband is going to come now. So don't leave us unless you really have to. But he's going to come now. He's going to do some, um, some stir fried. Stir fried um, broccoli with chicken and all of that. So while he's getting his stuff together, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the comments to see how we are doing here. So let's see. So Decor and more Anita says that looks delicious. Oh, thank you so much. And it's not done yet. So imagine when it's finished, right? And then going on Vancouver Island, she says dinner time. Yay. Welcome, Lisa. Welcome, welcome. I think this is the second time. Well, I think it's the first time you've been on my live live. And I have watched one of my replays before. So what we do for the new people that come on, whoop, 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 whoop. Welcome, Lisa. <laughs> And then um, the core and more Anita says, oh, she's saying hi to her. Mrs. from the garden says, yes, for sure. Get the kids involved. Absolutely. Because when they see, you know, like, you know, your efforts in planting your things, or if you're not, you know, reaping some of these things that we're looking at, not everyone is. I mean, I bought it from the store. But when they see that you're using it and, you know, they're helping you, it, one, it teaches them a skill. They're learning how to cook, you know, for one. And for two, you know, they're eating, you know, the work of their hands. And that's very rewarding. It makes you feel like you're doing something. You're, you know, it's satisfying. So, again, you know, like for the live videos, you know, basically incorporate either fruit or vegetable um, in it. That's the start of the show we do. We try to do usually more than one thing, you know, with that particular item for the day. Sometimes we may not get a chance to do it. Most times you may either do two or three different things that we are um, using it for. So she says, it looks great. And she says, thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. And Lisa, I mentioned it before, we were talking about the hydroponics, um, the hydroponics growing system that I did a video on, like it was two videos ago, so about two weeks ago, where I planted some herbs in there, cilantro, basil, what was the other one? Um, oregano. oregano, yes, it's like an Italian blend kind of sort of. And I'm going to be showing my uh, my first harvest. It's going to be my video coming on Thursday. And I'm super excited to read them because, you know, they grew really, really fast. So that thing, it definitely works. You know, they have reached out to me with that product. And I said, let me test it out. I always give my honest opinion, you know, whenever they give them to me. 
And that's exactly what I did. And so far, I've been pretty pleased with it. So you guys will get to see it on Thursday. So if you've never subscribed before, I see some new people on here. And I truly, again, welcome you so much. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. You can give me a thumbs up, you know, if you're, you know, getting information from here. So he's coming through now with these things that he's going to be doing his stir fry for. I need to show you how beautiful. And this is, you know, nature right here. What God provides for us. Look at all these wonderful colors. You know, you have the green from the celery. You have the white from the onion. Green from the, um, this is um, bak choy or pak choy as we call it uh, in Jamaica. You have the red. or this is more, Yeah, this is like red from the peppers. We also have yellow bell peppers as well. And we have orange. Orange from the, the bell pepper again. And bear in mind, guys, like in nature, you know, whenever you see, like, as long as it's something that is edible, the more colors that you see, like, the, you know, they say, you know, eat from the rainbow of colors in the whole spectrum. The more the different, you know, color um, fruits and veggies that you incorporate in your diet, the healthier it is for you. You have a more balance going on than just having, you know, the straight one thing all the time. And again, you know, take a look at broccoli and see all of the nutritional value that you get from it. You know, it has very good health benefits for you. So I think he's about ready to get started now with his stir fry. So I'll give him his room. No rush. Yeah. What, what I'm doing right now, I'm just basically washing the chicken off with vinegar. Because um, Vinegar and water. Vinegar and like water. a little light vinegar solution. We like to do that for our meats because... It tends to help it to, um, you know, we just like how it makes Take it not as raw it's sometimes, raw. you know, yeah. kind of gaminess to the meat sometimes. So that's what we do. So this is what's coming up. He's going to be doing that. I'm going to be putting away my Ritz crackers. And guys, you can tell me if you would use, if you like the idea of using the Ritz crackers on the top of the casserole, or if you prefer to use like, say, breadcrumbs, because that's another option as well. Or just maybe sprinkle some cheese on the top, whatever you figure works for you. But I like to have a little bit of bite to the meal so that's why i put it on the top of the cheese and again if you're just joining in be sure to go to the replay so you can basically watch to see you know how we did it we have you know this other recipe coming up here so we'll be taking a look at it at that point so all right let me go ahead and clear off some of these things right here and then i'll take a look at the chat again to see how we are doing so he's going to be um, cutting the meat. So let me bring it a little bit down so you can see what he's doing there. So you need more of this? You need to um, work on the chicken so we can get Okay. All right. So basically, the chicken I'm going to put in here is about probably two pounds of chicken breast. I mean, just for for um, for ease, that's why I'm using um, chicken breast. But you can use um, whatever um, cut of the meat that you prefer. It's kind of quicker and easier when you use um, the breast because that cooks a lot faster than the other parts, right? And when you're cutting your meats, right, you want to basically cut it right along um, across the lines so it's not, so you can get some bite to it. And you basically will cut the size of the meats um, about the same size, right? So that way when you're cooking, everything will cook within the same time frame. If you cook, if you cut them at different sizes, then you'll find that your, your cooking time is going to be different, right? So you just want to basically cut them like about, um, you know, one inch size to your finger like that if you want. And then um, that will give the cooking time the same for all of them when you're doing it, right? And as Marnie was saying, you know, we try to cook with different colors, different vegetables. You know, you mm -hmm. basically use whatever you have. Yeah. And when you do that, you know, you get all the nutrients that your body needs, right? This, a lot of times we get sick because... It makes sure you can see what he's doing, guys. Yeah. My bad. I'm trying to... <laughs> he's taller than I am. Can you tell? <laughs> That's fine. I don't have to screw down like that. I'm, yeah. Okay. So, I'm, I'm not that short, but I'm, I am a little vertically challenged. So, you know, the screen, we have to switch it around, you know, when he's coming to cut up his thing. So, you know, I got to give him some, some room to do what he's doing here. So I want you to see him, but I want you to see what he's doing. So if you can go back a little bit further... Okay. Then they can see Just it. Make sure the vegetable and meat, you know, yeah. they're in the same pot. Yeah, we don't separate. like for them to mix together. So right. he's going in and cutting up the meat. So I hope you can see it a little bit better there. Because we tried it, the camera, the camera is switched around. And the reason why I do it is because, like, when I hold up, like, say, the salt and you're looking at it, um, see, I'm turning it the wrong way because it's reverse. 
But when I when we do it, the camera, that way you can read what I have on there so you can see exactly what I have. Because when we flip it the other way, then everything is backwards for you. You can't see what I have there. So yeah, so I'm gonna you gonna put it in this pot over here. Yeah, that, okay. I'm gonna use a Dutch pot again. On this burner right here. Uh, either will work for me. That's yeah, fine. I think I can see it from over here. So let me um need to start warming up a little bit. So let me take a look at the chat and see what is going on on here. So we, I just spoke with Lisa. Oh, Lisa says exciting. <laughs> so, oh, Mondale, welcome, welcome. Welcome, my dear. I hope you're feeling a lot better because I know yeah. you weren't feeling well the other yeah. day. I was like, oh, no, this is Mondale. She sounds so sick. Yeah, and it's please. going around a lot. So I hope you're feeling a lot better. She um she has a um home decor channel. Well, her name tells you the home story. And she's pretty good at that. And so does Lorna. Lorna's the core. Lorna says, hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, Lorna. You guys missed the steps of us doing the, the creamy, the broccoli, the creamy broccoli chicken casserole, but it's in the oven right now. We can always go back and see the replay to see how we did it, but it's going to be delicious. And it's perfect for the type of weather we're having now. And if it's snowing in your area, cold in your area, rainy in your area, but over here we are cold. We're in the Southeastern United States. And I think next Wednesday, we're going, going to be having to 17, 17 degrees, 17 degrees Green Fahrenheit. Be about eight degrees. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So, I, you know, I'm a tropical girl, so I don't like when it's warm like that. You know, really like cold. Yeah. That's what I meant to say. My bad. I don't like when it's cold. I like when it's, you know, I mean, I don't want to be boiling, but at the same time, you know, I like to, I like to feel cool. I'm just adding the oil in the pot here so it can be warm when he is finished. But yes, guys, like if I had to choose like an ideal temperature, like say they say, you're going to be stuck on this for all, you know, all the time. 78 is good for me. You know, that's a perfect temperature for me. In the uh, summertime, that's the temperature seven, inside seven, the house. Seven, seven, no, that's a little cool because then, you know, the pool, you go to the pool or, you know, wherever it might be a little cool in the water. <laughs> But yeah, if I could choose a temperature, it would be 78 for me. Not too hot, not too cold, just right. Okay, so I got one more piece to go. Mm -hmm. we'll, so we'll let's, so let me pass. keep checking the chat on here. All right. Yeah, that so should be enough. In the interest of time, I'll just do this right? Yeah. And I'll put so, this in the fridge. This right here is about four and a half chicken breasts. And then what I'll do is I'll go ahead, um, I'll just add some light. Light salt, um, soy sauce on it. Yeah, low sodium is what you need. Low, low right. sodium soy this sauce. One right here. Yeah, there we go. Right there. So that's the one we use. Keep them out or sometimes use the one. There's a girl, I forget the name yeah. of that one. So our pot's getting hot over girl. here. A little bit. Turn it down. It's down. And my um, Shirley, I don't know where Cheryl is because normally Cheryl is out here, but Cheryl is making fun of me on my Dutch pot. You can see it right here. We call it a Dutchy. You know, in the islands or um, a Dutch pot, you know, or sometimes they it's say so a Dutch old. oven because you can bake it. It has the same metallic cover like the rest of the pot. So you can put the whole thing inside the oven and bake in whatever you're baking. Kind of like when you put a skillet inside the oven, similar situation. So anyway, that's my little Dutch pot right there, Dutchy as we call it. So, yeah. That pot, he says... Because when I met him, we already had it, and we we have been together. We've been married for twenty five years, so this pot is very old. <laughs> it came from Jamaica, all the way up with us up to over here. All right, so let me see now. Oh, so she says, um, we're saying hi to each other. Mandel says hi, Mark. She's saying hello. Uh, she oh, says, <laughs> Uh, Pastor <laughs> so Juanita says, "May Marlene, when is the release of your cookbook? Okay, you're giving me a thought, you know. Gotta get things together, but yes, <laughs> you know, and it will be, you know, featuring something, you know, something that would be from the garden. Like I said, whether it's yours or not, your garden, whether you grew it yourself or somebody grew it somewhere. But you know, the more natural stuff you have in your diet, the better it is for you, you know." Help you to live a healthier life. So we'll have to see right. how that goes. So basically, just added like about, I'd say, uh, a tablespoon soy mm -hmm. sauce. And re you might be saying, you know, hey, why, why you just add that small amount more salt and all that? Because the sauce I'll add on there will basically add more salt to it. So you basically want to think about what you're going to do afterwards, right? So you just add what you need at this point, mm -hmm. right? And then I'll put a little bit of garlic powder going in there. All right, that's about 
teaspoon. Mm -hmm. So the soy sauce, light sodium, and the garlic powder is what we're putting in there for right now. And you're gonna go ahead and stir it right now. Right. Stir so, right. so it's going in, guys. Watch out. It's on low. A little bit more, a little more heat. Oh. He says there's too much oil. I put too much oil in the pot. Yikes. Yes, I didn't pass the test. <laughs> ah. Let me be careful. Careful, careful. Let me take some out. Guys, don't play around with fire. It's dangerous. Don't do this. More. All right, that should be okay. More. That should do. That's fine. It'll be all right. All right. All right, so we're going to add in the meat right now. Let me take a look at the chat. Hey, Warren, welcome, welcome, welcome. Well, it's not your first one here, so I can't give it a whoop whoop, but I'll still do it anyway because it's a new year. So it's your first time on my life for the new year. So welcome, welcome, welcome. And Andrea says, I love my stir fry vegetables. Yes, you can put meat in there if you want or just do your vegetables by themselves. It just depends on what you prefer, but it's all a part of healthy eating. So Blessings from the Garden says, yep, the good old Dutchie. Yep, so she knows what I'm talking about. That's what we call it, you know, in the islands. We call it the Dutchie, but, you know, like I said, we call it the Dutch pot or the Dutch oven. And they're pretty pricey nowadays, man. Back in, back, you know, growing up, those things are kind of like, they didn't cost a whole lot. Those are the more inexpensive pots. Try to see if you can get a good one right now and see how much you're going to tell you it costs. And even like this, the skillets, if you're trying to get like a wrought iron skillet, they cost a lot of money, you know, the really good ones. And what we have been trying to do, guys, and if you know where I can get one, please let me know. We want to get like a waffle maker that is made of wrought iron, like the iron oh, one, the cast iron, it. cast iron, I guess is what you say. But, you know, basically not, not the, because every time we buy one, it costs a good amount of money. It looks really nice. They say it's put in the copper and this and that. We use it a couple of times, all of a sudden it starts to peel off again. I'm just like, oh my gosh, here we go again, or fade out. But if you get the metal ones, then it's, you know, the old fashioned ones, it's going to last for a lifetime. And honestly, when you cook with things that are made with iron, your body gets some of the iron from there too, you know? So he's going to cut them up. Pretty okay. much what you're trying to do is you cut everything a similar size vegetable. So the cooking time will be you know about the same mm -hmm. right and i'm not going to use all this because i'm going to use part of it with the um the salad you're going to do afterwards all right all right so you could use that one and yeah I'll stop that. go ahead with that yeah let me help over here stir the pot just a little bit all right so I'll go ahead and add some celery i'll cut these across Basically, diagonally again, just to give it interest in terms of different shapes. But I try to keep the sides in the same way. And these here, I keep these by themselves because these take a shorter time to cook. Now, the onion is what I'll, I'll put in there first, along with the white part of the bok choy. And also the the carrots. Now the onions, if you want to, when you're doing stir fry, the best way to cut the onions not across, but along the lines of it, right? Because if you cut it across, you release all the juices and it becomes more soggy, right? So the, the key thing is to cut it and have it straight up and down. Um, you call it Julian. Julian. Yes, yeah. Julian. Julian. Yeah. So that's pretty much where you do it, right? And again, you try to keep the sizes similar. So that when you're cooking it, everything will cook. You really cannot cook at the same rate. Right. Yeah. All right, let's get back onto the chat. <laughs> she was talking about my touchy. <laughs> she said, yes, the good old Dutchy. And she says, um, we have some. I, I I bet you do. I bet you absolutely do. Because uh, because but nowadays they don't even make them the same because sometimes I'll go like to the international market and uh, you know to look for the ones that they have in there. It is not the same. When you tap on the pot, it sounds different. It feels a lot lighter. So I'm just like, I wonder what kind of metal they have in this. It's probably not a lot of iron. Maybe mostly aluminum that's in those ones because yeah. they're not heavy like that, you know. 
So you still have to be careful looking out for those. So it's only about this size. Okay. So I just took a peek at the casserole, guys, and I see a few little bubbles coming through on there. So it is coming along. And like I said, it's a dish that, you know, it doesn't take too long to cook because the things are already pre-cooked. You know, um, the broccoli, we just steamed those. And the chicken was, you know, we already cooked those before. So it makes it easy. The onions were, you know, diced pretty small. So it's not like anything major. And of course, everything else, seasonings and the juices and whatever, you know, combined together. So it works really well that way. You gonna add those in now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You want me to add? What, what do you want? No, 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 no. It's a little box right there. Okay. So our chicken is pretty much ready to go. Let me show you what one of them looks like. Nice and soft and tender. So you can see it right here. So the chicken is cooked through. We're using all chicken breast today. Like my sister, she pretty much prefers, you know. The chicken breast, that's what she yeah. eats. But if, I mean, if you wanted to use some um, dark meat as well, like the thighs or the leg, the meat from that part, then that's perfectly fine as well, too. Okay. So the, because broccoli is the star of the show, broccoli goes in last with along with the the, the green parts of the, um, the bok choy because this doesn't take a very long time to cook, right? Right? So you basically will just cut green part off like that and then you cut up the box that right part separate diagonal. yeah so that makes it easier you know that's a that's a nice tip right. and these are going in right now with that and then i'll just cut the carrots in the meantime so you can see all the colors, guys. That's going to give you all of that good nutrition. You know, you got your celery, you got your peppers, red, yellow, orange. So, you know, and they say a part of eating, eating, in, it, it's not just, you know, what you're tasting, but also what you're seeing with your eyes. So, of course, you like, to, you know, a lot of colors. It makes the food look more appetizing. Of course, if it smells good, that's another sense that's kicking in there as well. So what you see, what you smell. And then the last one would be what you taste. So, of course, you want it to be, you know, appealing when you're preparing it. And because they is about an inch and a half. And again, it's all a matter of doing it so that the cook time is pretty much the same. It's faster that way. If you want, you can make them a little bit smaller. It doesn't necessarily have to be um, on that size. Can you see where he... um. Because these are um, string beans, so you can see like where the the strings. Oh, those came from the celery. Well, yeah. there's some on here too, but some of the beans kind of like they may have strings on there, so you have to yeah. strip them off. But yeah. sometimes if, if they they're don't, older, so. if they're older, you basically you know you, you grab it like that, you peel it from the back. But these are pretty yeah. young, or you know, so they, they won't have that vein in it. But when they're very much older, you'll get you'll get that. Vein yeah, these don't them. have that, but some of them do. Yeah. All right, so you can go ahead and add that now. Okay, so let me add this in so we can get going. I'm gonna turn the, the um the flame back up a little bit higher so we can get to get stirred. And again, you know, it's not just colors and the textures and everything, but when you do it this way. You get all the necessary minerals and everything and vitamins that you need within the one meal. So it's healthier for you and better. Right. And then I'll go with the carrots. All right, so it's stirring along there. Got a notification again. Oh, another way you can do this, which is if you want to. Just make it really quick. You can do like what you did with broccoli before. You can blanch mm -hmm. it with hot water. Yes. Um, and that way it's kind of pre-cooked and that will shorten your cooking time. All right.
And those carrots are looking really, really good. I'm gonna take a piece of one of them. Mm -hmm. All right, so these are going there now. Yeah. Okay, so you guys are greeting each other, so that's awesome. It says we have some interest. Says, hey, Anita. Lisa, I'm not sure if you're still watching, but I'd love to know what the weather is like in your area. I saw your video pop up earlier. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet, but it says something about snow day or something in the garden. Oh. I don't know. She lives in Vancouver. Oh, man. Yeah, that's north. That's north. That's northwest Canada, right? Vancouver. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you know, when you hear Canada, you think, oh my gosh, it's so cold. But it is Vancouver Island. Let me take a look here and see. I think that's what it is. I see her channel so often, I'm forgetting. But anyway, um, she said mentioned about snow, so I know that she um you probably had some recently. I'm not sure what it is today for you, but if it is that time of year when everything is, you know, cold if you're not in a tropical area. Yeah. Are these going in right now or not yet? Yeah. Okay. Broccoli. So for the broccoli, we basically have a floor like this. And I'm going to put it in quarters, right? And like I said, the broccoli goes in, uh, but it's like about a minute left to cook because you don't want it to be overcooked. You want all the nutrients to be there. You cook it too long, the sweet gets all soggy and mushy and you know, you don't enjoy the texture. Uh, That's the thing with stir frying, guys, you gotta keep stirring. <laughs> if you don't want to just stick to the bottom and get burned. And the oven is at um, 375 degrees. We take another peep in there. Yes, my people, she is a bubbling. If you like to see that. You can rip these or you can just tip or you can basically cut it up. But I'm just ripping it. Because the more you stir, you know, it's starting to shrink down a little bit because it's been losing water. So it's going to lose volume and it's going to get less. All right, so go ahead and add these in there now. And these are the stalks from the, the broccoli. I basically just cut them up like that so nothing is wasted. All right. Yeah, it's a good idea if you don't mind freezing your freezing your items to basically go in and um you know you guys cook like say you have a day like say maybe Sunday afternoon you know maybe your downtime for the week you can go in and just cook like you know different things like you know we're using the broccoli now as a star for today you can just like do different dishes with the broccoli. And then you'd let it cool down properly, of course. And if it's in, the, you know, put it in the right container, not glass, of course, but you know, something that it will work in, like plastic or whatever. And you can just freeze them, you know. Yeah, that wasn't very common when time. I was growing up. Yeah. yeah, my mom didn't, you know, believe in like, you know, cooking food and freezing it, but you can. And then you just thaw them out when you're ready. Because the resources were different. But... Yeah, she, I mean, but you know, she um. She would cook like every, like pretty much every day, pretty much every day. But you know, things are a lot, you know, more fast paced now. Things go out, you know, really quick. So you kind of want to have things there, so you can just grab it really quick and then you know do what you're doing. So, yep. Okay. One more. All right. So the last of everything came in here, and we have a good, good mix of things here. So the pot is kind of full, so no, let me take try to up. work it here to get my pot holder. You gonna add any um any more of the sauce to it yet? I'm gonna add the sauce now. 
Okay. Once it wants everything it's cooked. You basically have it on high if you have like a walker, so you know you, you, you should be able to really stir high. it faster. It's a little faster, yeah. I remember what I saw a video that Warren did when he was cooking. Yeah. Man. I don't know where Cheryl is. Let me see. Cheryl's not on here, so I don't know what happened to her. Because Cheryl typically comes to these lives. Let me see. We need some more of the cheese to cook down. It's on the table. No, it's fine. It's fine how it is. So, you know, I did want to take a moment, by the way, guys, to say um, thank you so much. Um, like I said, I've gotten, because I said this earlier, but I'm going to say it again, because I believe in saying thanks. And I do want to thank you um, for, you know, subscribing and be sharing my videos. I really appreciate it. Again, if you didn't notice it before, it's not a major change, but the, my channel name has changed from Marlene's How To's. It's been with me for four years. I feel it was time for a change. Now it's Marlene's Home and Garden. And basically, I think when you, when you hear How To's, it's kind of like, it's how to, it could be so many things, how to cook how to clean, how to learn a new language, you know, how to fix a car, how to, you know, it's just, it, it's kind of wide. Which if people watch your videos, they'll kind of figure out what your channel is about or you explain it in your videos and so on. But when you see the name, it should kind of help you, I think, a little bit more to figure out what this channel is about. So that's why I said Home and Garden. And I've been toying with the idea for years now. And I said, it's time to do it now. And I said, I just said, we're just going to go ahead and do it. So, of course... You know, the link changed, you know, a little different. But I think when you click the older link, if you say had the older channel link, it will still take you to the new one. Because my sister, she heard she had changed hers to Andrew's Kitchen. And then she realized that there was somebody else with the same channel name, Andrew's Kitchen. So we said, well, that's kind of a clash. Because I tell people on the live, you know, go over and support Andrew's Kitchen. But then they end up on the other lady's channel. <laughs> They're getting her people. So I'm just like, uh, no, that's not what we had in mind. So... We just had an Andrea's Kitchen time, or time if you call it time, and you can see what it's about. It's Andrea, it's in her kitchen, it's time, it's going to be food cooking, you know, seasonings and whatever. So I think the name is important, you know, you know, if it shows you over time, and the Bible and everything, is, names are important, right? Names were changed from time to time because people were called out to do something different, and so their name changed. So, but basically, it's pretty much the same um thing for the channel you will see gardening most of gardening outdoor but i'll do a few indoor ones as well like i said the hydroponics one is coming up i'm gonna do my first harvest i'm probably gonna do it on monday it's a big holiday here i'm not sure when you're gonna be watching this replay video but it's gonna be mlk day on monday so i'm gonna go in and um harvest them and i'll have that video for you god willing by thursday so you can see how we did it we're gonna use them to cook i probably won't get to do that on the live because I do them like typically every other week unless we're going to be traveling, maybe put two together and then have a two week gap in between or something like that. So I, I don't want to keep them that long, but we are going to use them, but I'll show you the harvesting so you can see how it turned out. But just to have like plants indoors and plants outdoors as well. So you'll basically see that going on. And of course, as the growing season gets closer and closer, you'll see like a lot more, you know, of the outdoor things going on but we have to keep the channel going and you know we love indoor plants as well too so you know why not feature them and try for them and you know i keep saying you know like people say they don't have a green thumb but it's a learned behavior some people they're just naturally blessed with certain things it comes a lot easier for them but honestly i mean even like cooking i mean i didn't just wake up and know how to cook i had to watch my mom do it for a few years and then even afterwards because she still did most of it but after years went by and I had to, you know, I cook for, you know, my family, I try new dishes, I get recipe books, I see people doing different things. And it's a learned behavior. It's the same thing with, you know, growing plants, whether indoors or outdoors. You know, you do your research and you just um, take a look to see, um, you know, what you can do. And, and it works, you know, and just, you know, ask around and it's a step-by-step -step process, but you will definitely get there. But yes, so it's going to be, so it's not Marlene's home and garden. Plants indoors, but mostly plants outdoors, especially when the weather gets warmer. So let me see. So um, blessings from the garden says, like the name change. Thank you so much, and I love your channel name. I mean, what a what a wonderful name yeah. can you have? 
Yeah. And every time I watch her video, well, not every single one, because sometimes she's cooking what she reaped. But every time I see it, I said to myself, yep, blessings from the garden for real, for real. You know, blessings. She reaping wonderful things from her garden. And the experience in there as well that she has with her daughter or niece, depending on who, because it's um, their twin sisters on there. So depending on who is in the garden, but you know, they get that, the blessing of their crops that they reap and everything and the dishes that they make and everything. So of course, you know, blessings from the garden. There you go. And just kitchen time. But Pastor Juanita, she has um, Rockefeller Deliverance um, Deliverance Temple where they, um, you know, it's a faith-based Christian channel that they have and they have good Bible studies and all of that that goes on on there as well. And we have Johnson's Home Decor, Home Decor right there. Decor and more with Anita. We have Lorna's decor. I hope I didn't miss anybody, but there are quite a few of you on here today. And I appreciate you joining me um, on this. But yes, guys, so those things are there. Okay. So I think we're probably, let me take a look one more time at the casserole to see if we're ready for it to be taken out and cooled down. Let's see how we are looking. Yep. I like what's going to be. We're going to take it out. Here you go. First off here. So I'll show it to you in a minute when it's a little bit cooler. Because I don't know if you can see it from over there, but it's actually bubbling. And it smells so good, guys. And like I was saying, because I did my the filling on the inside, I didn't put any cheese inside there. But if you want, if you really love cheese, that you can put some cheese on the inside as well. But we just put the Ritz crackers on the top along with the um, the shredded cheese, and that's what we have on the top. And it's a nice golden brown color, but it has right now, it's just kind of like simmering down a little bit. So um, coming on up, we're gonna be um, planning to do um, spinach. That's what I have in my mind um, for the next live that we have coming up, hopefully in two weeks, we'll see how it goes. Sometimes I do them back to back, you just never know. It depends on what plans we have and how we shift things around. Um, and I hope you'll join me for the next one because they're usually on Saturdays, whichever Saturday I do it, um, at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And of course, I love when you join me live. I love the interaction, but I also want to say thank you to my replay people who come on afterwards. I also going to be doing a Valentine's special. We did one last year and it was so much fun. There were some little downsides to it as well, too. And we just have to be real about life because we're talking about relationships and things like that. And there's also you know, some challenges in that as well. And sometimes you have to do interest, in, introspection. And I did get some feedback from people afterwards about some things that were going on with them. And um, that's just a part of life, guys. We just, you know, problems come up, different things happen, but we deal with them and we enjoy the journey. So that's what the main thing is. About. So, you know, I'll be well, you know, we should have that one um, at that point as well too. So let me see. So um, Andrea's Kitchen Time, she says, oh, she says, thanks. I think I went too far ahead. Andrea says, um, yes, I do. The dryness of the chicken breast creates a great blank slate for seasoning. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I know that you like your um, your chicken breast. Absolutely. And then um, Blessing from the Garden says, thanks. So you're very welcome. And Andrew says, we are freezing below 30 degrees in Georgia. Yeah, it's a cold time right now. It's that time of year, guys. And I pray everyone will be safe, you know, safe in this weather. Because and even when you're driving out there, if there's any, like, spots where you might have shade, watch out for black eyes and stuff like that. Yeah, because, you know, you don't, that's why they call it black eyes. When I moved here first and I heard somebody say black eyes, I'm just like, black eyes? What are they talking about? <laughs> you have to learn the culture when you move somewhere new, right? So I, I asked someone today, I said, what do you mean by that? And they said, well, the water is on top of the asphalt, you know, the, on the roadways, sometimes even on the bridges, but the bridges tend to freeze over more quickly because if the bridge is like this, you have cold air above and cold air underneath. So the water on top freezes a lot quicker. But then you have the areas that have shade hanging over from the trees or whatever. So because it's cooler, because the sun isn't hitting it as easily, the eyes tend to form and you can't see it. You're seeing right through the through it. So you think, oh, that's just the road. That's just a little wet spot. Nope. And then you start slipping and sliding and it can be very dangerous depending on where you are. So guys, if you're in those areas, you know, if you have to go out, please, please be very careful. All right. Now, um, for the stir fry, 
pretty much what we use. Um, you can use any sauce that you want, but we use um, this one here. It's an oyster sauce right there, right? And that basically just you just add like about um, two tablespoons, right? But it just depends on how much meat you cook. You basically add it to taste. You don't add too much. You add a little bit of water, you know, just to let it be flowing a little bit because right? it's pretty thick. Now, you know, Marley has been boasting a lot about her <laughs> hydro hydroponics, hydroponics and everything, uh -oh. right? Uh -oh. and last week, you know, I, well, not last week, the last live, she was there saying, you know, yeah, you cut up. I cut. I, I went ahead and said, you know what, I'm going to go cut this, this, this scallion, <laughs> right, green onion. I put it in some water and get it to grow, right? And she's just like, yeah, whatever, whatever. All right. Here See, we go, there man. you go. Got it going. <laughs> Got it going. Got it going. Got it going. Right, so we got skeleton coming up. We're really good at it. See that? Them, yep. them. You can so, see it right through there. You put the lights. So you see? This is in two right. weeks. Right. And that's what we're saying. Nobody has any excuses why they can't plant something. Because all he did was to just cut it off and just stick it in the water. And there you go. In a, in a couple of weeks, you'll yeah, be able to right. harvest some green onions from that. Yeah. So there you have it, folks. <laughs> So let's go ahead and warm the rice. We did the rice earlier. I'm going to go ahead and warm the rice. Right. Just warm oh. it in the, in the microwave. Is it in uh, here? Another thing that people do sometimes, just for um, simplicity, um, okay. is um, the broccoli. They may have like broccoli sticks, I mean, broccoli rather, and carrot sticks along with celery. So that's something that you can do. You can put it, you know, like that. You put everything to bite size, pretty much. Right. If you want to cut it, you can cut it even smaller, you know, depending on you know what the person wants for bite size. But just like for finger food. All right, so you can serve this with whatever salad dressing that you want, whether it be ranch, you know, Thousand Islands, you know, different things depending on what you like. All right, so you have that there. So you came for me with your with your green onions, huh? <laughs> hey, you inspired me. I didn't come yeah, for you. Yeah, I was trying. Yeah. yeah, I was. You inspired me, man. You inspired me. Hey. You got to put it over to there so they can see that they can see your face. Okay. All right. Put it over there. So we're going to put some ranch dressing in here to go along with it because, you know, we're just trying to. And, you know, I was doing some research. And you know what they said? They said that broccoli is better if it's eaten raw. Because it's between spinach and broccoli. They say they're both good for you either way, but they say broccoli is better if you eat broccoli raw than when it's cooked, which is still good, but better when it's raw. And spinach is the other way around. Spinach is better for you when it's cooked compared to when it's raw. So it's an acquired taste for me. Okay. <laughs> tell you. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna go get up my ranch dressing. Oops. All right, so I'm not sure how, how much you want to put up there. I'm just going to do a few, mm -hmm. and you can let it be like that so you can lay it out when you want it. All right, so I'm going to cut them a little bit more narrow. What? The carrot sticks? No, the celery. Just split it down the middle like okay, so. Uh, it's uh, a little people, bit smaller. People are, people are dipping, and I would like to have something to grab on. And then we have these. And they call them, I think they call them crudites. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's what they call them. So I'm just going to put this in here. And most kids, I find that most kids, you know, because the um the ranch dressing is not, I'm not going to put a ton of it in there. Just put it on the dish right here. You can see it. Yeah, just mm -hmm. And then we have these. I'm just going to fix them on here. What else are we putting in? We have some, um, we have some of the peppers as well. Yeah. I'm just waiting on you too. What are you doing? So. We can just lay them out in the dish. Wait for the peppers for you. I have like, you know, the dishes that you use, but it's it, it's more like for a party size, guys. So that's why I'm not really doing it that way over here today. I don't, I don't want to put them in there and then it's kind of like, why do you have so much, you know? Yeah, you're going to be. In a, so a little in a, big old, in a big old, yeah, we got to a eat a lot. bowl. It's just like, that's too much. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you have some um, some other ones, some red ones for over there. Let's see this. Make some 
And your oyster sauce already went in? Yep, already went in. All right. I think we can turn the oven off. Okay. Yeah. 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 Take a look at the chat over here. So, listen to the garden says, can't wait to see the harvest from the hydroponics. Yep. Maybe face up. We get a plate to plate the food. Oh man, the casserole really smells good. Mm -hmm. Boy, ready for it, guys. Ready, ready, ready. Let's try this plate. Thank you all for sticking with us. I will have to show you those separately. When Marlene does the, the, the spinach, um, do you want do you want me to do like a, 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 a smoothie with that as well? No, no, no. No, no, no. I'm not talking for no. I'm talking for oh, the spinach the, one. Yeah. Smoothie spinach. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That sounds interesting. I have, I've had it before. I did it when I was in the office. My manager did it, and that thing really tastes good. Hmm. I'm serious. So I'm probably, trying to. This rice was done before, so we're just going to go ahead and put it. I'm trying to get this so you can, I think you can see how it's done. Hopefully it holds up the way I'm Here we go. And we have the next cup coming up. Right. Now, typically, we wouldn't be serving the stir, stir fry with the casserole, but I just want you to see them individually. So we're going to put them on the same plate so you can see how it turned out. Oh, my mom used to cup rice like this for my dad growing up. He just do it like a display. <laughs> you know. So that's our rice. Uh-oh. Should have pressed it in a little bit more, but that's okay. Now I need something to take up my um take up the casserole. Let me show you guys before I take it out of the container. One got wet, so I can't hold it with it. Here's the Just to show you what it looks like. So you can see how the top it has a nice golden brown color. And that would be the cheese and the rich crackers on top. So it's gonna give you that nice crunch that you want. And you can see the creaminess right, creaminess right in here. So again, guys, if you missed it, you can go and watch the replay and you'll see how it looks. But this is gonna be so so good. This is what you call comfort food. And it's very, very easy to do. I always try whenever I'm doing, you know, the cooking videos on here to try to make it, you know, as easy as possible for you because we want you to try them, you know. So, so you can see what it looks like. And this is thoroughly cooked because, again, everything was cooked before. So that's what it looks like. It's very nice and creamy. And you have the crunch on the top right there. And it's a little unorthodox to put the, what you call it now, the, um, the stir fry with this. But we're just going to put it on the plate so you can see what it looks like. And what he does sometimes, too, to give the stir fry a little bit of crunch, he will also, like, sprinkle some peanuts in there or some mm -hmm. cashews in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bring this over and move this space so you can see them. I don't mind my food touching, but I know some people are like, I don't like when my food touches on the plate. I'm just like, what? They're going to the, into the same place. You're just like, I do not like when my food touches. I said, okay. So I'll put this on this side here. So it's diagonal. And then we drop it right in the corner, right here. So it doesn't run over. All right. So let's go ahead and get okay. stir fry. Are you going to put some peanuts in there or no? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Guys, it's time for dinner. We tend to eat late sometimes. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Yeah, it is late. 
And my kids go to school, they're in college and they work, so sometimes they're late for dinner. So we've gotten to that. It's a little late tonight, but just one to second. show you. Broccoli and yeah. huh? one second. You can see the broccoli. You're gonna go ahead and sprinkle some of the peanuts on top to give it that nice crunch. This, again, this is lightly salted peanuts. Yeah, we don't try to have too much sauce. It has that nice crunch. So you have crunchier, crunchier, but it also has that nice, rich um, gooeyness inside there. So for some reason, we have to open this door so you can actually, actually see what it looks like. So that's our creamy right there, and that's our thingy right there. So tell me what you think, guys. <laughs> We're going to come and take a little. No, it's okay, because we, okay. we, we usually we take a little a little picture of it. That's Don't let that fall down, please, whatever yeah, you yeah, do. Yeah, you go fall. You got it. You got it. There you go. So we normally hold up the plate when we're coming down to a close. <laughs> so you can see it. Yep. They can't see you. So there you go, right. guys. There is a finished product. <laughs> so so that's it right here. So again, for the replay. Oh, and I almost forgot to show you these. I'm going to have to invest in a smaller one because we have a nice one, but it's kind of big. So... We have our ranch right here, the ranch, um, the ranch dressing, and we have the um, they call these crudites, and you just basically dip them in there, like so, and you just go ahead and enjoy. Very, very yummy and delicious. So, and kids like these, and it helps them to eat healthy. So, highly recommended. Highly recommended. And you can use you can use different um, salad dressings based on you know what their their mm -hmm. likes are. Most yes. kids I know. Seem to like like Thousand Islands. I like Thousand Islands growing up. So you know, you know. Yeah, whatever, whatever works whatever for you, man. Works whatever so works. Yeah. But guys, we want to say thank you so much for your support as usual. We love when you support us on these live videos. You can share them out if anyone you think may want to see them. And again, we feature a fruit or a vegetable or on special occasions a flower for that live video. We love you all. Uh, let me take the comments. I'm sorry. Um, let's see. So, uh, Pastor Juanita says, You are all such a beautiful couple working together in love and harmony. Marriage is truly a ministry. Love you both. Love you too. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. And you know, that's why we said we wanted to do the Valentine's edition again this year because it helped some people. It did cause some introspection, you know, from people and everything, but that's a part of life. You have to deal with it and then you move on. Listen from the garden says, What a beauty. Oh, thank you so much. She says, Unorthodox. <laughs> but Jamaicans, anything is anything. We do think care, things differently and with a bag. Yes. As you said, good job, guys. Thank you so much, guys. We appreciate you so much. Thanks again for joining us. Please be safe in the weather out there. Enjoy your house plants. You know, if you can't go out in the garden, you know, just be safe. All the best for the year. And we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care. And thanks again for joining us. And Most I hope blessings. you'll try these recipes, most importantly. So have a wonderful evening, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.